Nelar Oluyo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, it's just a great pleasure to be here at TEDx Silk Road in Istanbul. You are so lucky to be living in Istanbul. Incredibly lucky. You're right at the cross points of where the future is going. Now, I know that I'm coming on the stage wearing the same colors as Fenerbahce. <laughs> However, what I would say is that if I was wearing my TEDx uh, badge with the red band, then I would look just like someone from Galata Surrey, Surrey right? So for those of you that support either team, that's uh, very, very good. So um, I wanted to take you through some examples, and I must say Patrice and what he spoke about, just an incredible presentation showing you of what's coming next. And I thought I'd take you through some of the ideas of what I'm seeing around the world in an interesting way of something that is going to influence your lives in Turkey and Turkey's influence along the Silk Road because Turkey's at a really interesting point in its wider evolution of being leaders, and yourselves particularly could be leaders in what is going to be coming next. So if we have a look at this picture here, we see our world today is complicated, but it's uncomplicated by the rise of all of these devices, and most particularly with mobile and what mobile is able to do. So. Let's just have a look at the top 10 of mobile in this very rough little chart. We see China has over a billion subscribers. There's one telco, the Turk cell of China, has 650 million subscribers, China Mobile. Can you imagine if you're the chief accountant of China Mobile, you have to get 650 accounts, 650 million? But if you have a look at that uh, list uh, behind me, you'll see India, number two, 12 to 15 million new subscribers every month every month in India. So 900 uh, million, uh, soon going to be a billion in India, very important market. The, the United States is uh, coming behind it, but a long, long way behind. United States leads in certain aspects, but not in volume. Then of course, Indonesia, people don't realize Indonesia, which is the most important Muslim country for mobile. Uh, very, very big uh, mobile penetration and uh, some very interesting applications that have particular use uh, in Indonesia, which also have a use in the Middle East, in the Gulf, and in the Maghreb as well, where uh, certainly in terms of Muslim uh, interests and Muslim apps, as it is the case here in Turkey, very, very important. Brazil growing very much in South America, not just football, but also mobile and telephones. Russia growing quite fast. Interestingly, um, Google is not the number one search engine in Russia. It's Yandex. Anyone here heard of Yandex? There we are. Everyone's heard of Yandex. Uh, very interesting company. One of the founders of Yandex was this brilliant American woman by the name of Esther Dyson. Have you ever heard of Esther Dyson? Esther's a wonderful woman. Esther uh, has been involved in working in Russia, and she was one of the founders of Flickr. She was also, interestingly enough, someone who wanted to become a space tourist she went to the Cosmodrome in Russia to learn to become an astronaut. You know, you have to uh, go on a training program for nearly a year. Uh, she was so busy with Yandex, she could only do half of the training program. So she only had one foot in the spacecraft, and she decided she wasn't going to go up because it cost $25 million if you want to have a trip in a spacecraft. Uh, then, of course, Japan, important, and we're going to show you and tell you about some interesting examples in Japan. Pakistan also coming up quite big. Germany, not too bad. Nigeria, coming up big in Africa. Uh, it is the biggest market in Africa. They are going to be a billion, one billion mobile phone users in Africa in the next five years. Now, that's quite an interesting thing. And then, of course, Turkey, 78 million. Uh, not too bad. Uh, but Turkey and Turkey's influence is going to be much, much stronger. And before I, I came here today, during the course of this morning, I thought what I would like to do is speak to some people in Turkey to try and find out what their views were about mobile and how mobile could enhance them. So I thought, well, who could I speak to? I'll speak to Ferhan. She could certainly help. But then if I could speak to someone like Okan Bayulgan, maybe he will be able to help. Or maybe if I could speak to Tarkan, because of course he has such a big following, he could perhaps tell me. Uh, and I, or maybe even someone like Alex D'Souza, well-known soccer player, who's of course playing abroad. 
And I thought, no, 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 what I'll do is I'll go and visit somebody who really needs some mobile surgery. So I thought, what I'll do is I'll go to Ajda Pekan. <laughs> She's had so much plastic surgery, maybe it's a time to give her some mobile surgery. And what I would thought I'd do is, we'd first of all take a look at the big picture. Of course, she didn't really listen to me. She wanted to, t to really show me her new uh, handbags and shoes and all the changes on her face rather than the changes in her mobile. But take a look at this. Here's an interesting picture that was developed by the United Nations showing us we've now got just on 6 billion mobile phone users. And as Patrice uh, explained, uh, the whole notion of how this is going to increase, were we talking about machine-to-machine -machine communications of your phone talking to another machine or machines talking to another machine, IBM have actually said that in three and a half years' time, we will have one trillion devices talking to each other. But if you have a look where it says there are 2.5 billion users on the Internet, of course, we're talking about online and the Internet, but the mobile Internet is something that is going to gather pace on a global basis. And this is where Turkey stands in an incredibly advantageous position. Turkey has got intellectual capital. Turkey has got creativity. Turkey is really a place where this could be the laboratory of many of the things that the new world of mobile everything is going to happen and take place. So, Ban Birch Screenager. Are you a screenager? Do you know what a screenager is? Ban Birch Screenager. I say it again. How many of you here are screenagers? I don't believe it. There's one woman, there's two, there's three. Ah, Mr. Chico is a screenager. I can't believe it. Such a smart audience. No one here is a screenager. What is a screenager? That's a screenager. You look for the best screen available. When Patrice was talking earlier about 17 screens or 17 ways in which you can be seen and screened, don't you think that you are all screenagers? And being screenagers, when you think about it, that is really what is driving so much of mobile. Now, who is a screenager in this audience? Well, of course you are. And this is what is really going to change things. Of course, there's a book that came out about six months ago uh, called Shallow, which showed that with all of the screenagers and people being screenagers, intellectual thinking, time for reflection, some of the things that take hours and years to come up with, are we losing our sharpness of intellectual ca capacity and thinking by being screenagers? If you're under the age of 24, people say absolutely not. If you're under the age, over the age of 30, 30 to 45, maybe. If you're over 45, there's an interesting thing going on with mobile because people are really now in a position where they are uh, making much, much more interesting applications for older people. Okay, so let's keep going. Here we are, Kenya. Kenya is where all of the developments for mobile payments. Do you know that in Kenya, 70% of the population now pay for everything using their phone? They can buy a Coca-Cola. They can buy their kids' school fees, M-Pesa, started in Kenya by a fellow called uh, Michael Joseph at Safaricom, part of Vodafone, now is spreading all over the world, and you will see Visa, MasterCard here in Turkey. In the next 12 months, you'll be able to pay for everything by pointing your phone to something and buying it. Let's have a look here. This is a very interesting application in India. I paid a bribe. Someone started a website where they had paid a bribe, go onto a website, this immediately gets noticed by the government. Isn't this a great idea? Don't you think we should speak to uh, Erdogan and say to him, Hey, baby, why don't we start? I paid a bribe in Turkey. Someone here should start a website like that. Can you imagine how people would love it if you were in Chanakale and you could do this and you could write this down? Wouldn't that be something? Okay, here's a quick little picture of some high-spec handsets from Japan. Very interesting handsets, including... A handset, if your child has got juvenile diabetes, your child can put their finger on the sensor pad of the phone, 
the sensor pad will read through the surface of the skin of the child and it will send a text message to the caregiver or the parent for the child to get insulin. If the kid does that and calls the caregiver, they'll get a Disney cartoon. So that's an interesting way of high-spec handsets. Okay, some of the things that teens and tweens love about mobile, just check that out. Look at the time that teens are spending on their mobiles. Look at the frequency for 16 to 24-year-olds. My goodness, three hours on the mobile phone? Amazing. I know some married couples that spend more time on the phone than talking to each other. Is that possible? Well, if you get married at 16, as sometimes people do in India, some people say that that is the case. Okay, now here, just to, wanted to give you some graphics, and Patrice also mentioned the very, very important uh, subject of data visualization. We're becoming more graphic, more visual, so data visualization, very important. Look at these categories here. These are categories of important new ways in which mobile is really helping. And this brings me to one of the most exciting new areas in mobile that I thought you should really see. How many of you have heard of AR? One, two, three. How many of you have heard of augmented reality? Aha! So, AR, augmented reality. Now, you know, those of you who, who's not familiar with augmented reality? Oh good, everyone here knows about it. Well, uh, augmented reality is working really well. There's a company in the UK called Aurasma, A-U-R-A-S-M-A, that have got some interesting ideas, but the Sony Deep Innovation Lab in Japan have come up with the next layer of augmented reality, and I was very lucky to get a video clip just showing you some of the new developments in augmented reality. Of course, as you look through your phone at, the, at uh, what is in front of you, augmented reality is now borrowing from the best technology of camera definition so that the camera inside your phone will be able to determine the surfaces and so check this out. Here we go. Smart AR. So you are pointing your screen to that board and then you automatically get... Look at that. And look at the way you can now move. You can move very quickly, you can turn it around. And this is all the imagery done from your phone or from your iPad, your tablet. You can move it around quickly. This is something that is only very, very new, but this is going to have really significant impact and a profound impact on the way that things are done. Here's another clip just to show you another example of it. Just look at the speed of it. Of course, the Japanese love this kind of cartoon characterization. Very interesting. And you can see that the vectors <coughs> have been laid out that your camera and the smart technology inside your phone will allow you to actually do this. And this is going to be something that will be embodied in mobile phones over the course of the next year or two. Seen in Turkey very soon. I think we've got one more little clip just to show you that. One of the real advantages is you can now move it up and down sideways the speed of the way your phone would be able to interact with the, the AR technology is really something. Look at that. Imagine getting these effects. Imagine this in uh, helping disabled people where they might be able to utilize this process or helping students learn interesting new concepts in the way that education is really changing. Just got one more little clip to show you. Let's just have a quick look here. This is taking brands. You point your phone at a brand. Put your brand then see what happens to that brand you touch it so this brings your brand comes to life if you're an advertiser or you're a marketeer just look at what happens where you can start doing that on your phone after connecting using AR so AR is really like a whole new country of technology that has really got some interest and it brings us of course she's not augmented reality she is reality she's number one this week in the US and the UK. She's 53 years old. She'll be at Turkcell Stadium in 
beginning of June. I don't know how many of you bought tickets. And I wanted to just finish by telling you about this. She is, look at her, the material girl. We've got a very interesting technology. We said to Madonna, hey, Madonna, you've got this new record. Why don't you record in 40 different languages? Why don't you record in Turkish, Zulu, Oza, Spanish, Russian, Portuguese? She says, I don't have any time to go into the studio. Well, we've got technology that allows us to take Madonna's voice and digitally wash her voice over someone singing in Turkish. We then extract the Turkish singer's voice and the net result you'll hear is Madonna singing her song in Turkish. She won't have to go into the studio. Everything will be done with the original track and you'll basically be able to hear Madonna singing in Turkish. Will she do it? She said she wants to first hear what it sounds like in Spanish. We said to her, why don't you see what it sounds like in Zulu? And then it'll really be something. Anyway, it's something that we're working on, but we predict that over the next year or two, most of the artists, really, that are artists interested in pushing the future will record in 20 or 30 languages. It'll become quite cheap to do it. And in that way, you can develop contextual, colloquial relevance to your fans and to your audience. So, a couple of quick things just to tell you. The most interesting thing I've seen over my travels of the last couple of years, a couple of weeks actually, is in Japan, you can now use your car to charge the electricity in your house. What that means is, while your car is parked in the garage with a Bluetooth communicating from the battery of your car, you can have power in your house, all of your appliances, all of your lights for two days and all powered by the battery in your car. And you can then have a, on your mobile phone, you'll see the gauge, as Patrice had, had said, which will show you exactly how much is being charged. So ladies and gentlemen, we're living in such an incredible time. The future is so bright, we've got to wear sunglasses. Thank you very much.